Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, minimum add to make parentheses valid. So they give us kind of an interesting way to define parentheses. They basically say an empty string is valid. And then if you take that empty string and then you wrap it in parentheses, it is also valid. And if you take two strings that are valid, like these two, and you concatenate them together, that's also valid. And now we could kind of keep doing that. We could either wrap these or add additional strings that are also valid and just concatenate them. So basically what that means is every open parenthesis has to have a matching closing parenthesis and the order matters. The closing one has to come after the open one. Now, if you're familiar with this kind of concept, you probably know that the data structure that's commonly used for these types of scenarios is the stack. Let's see if that's actually going to be useful for us here or not. What we want is given some string, uh, suppose something like this, we want to know what is the minimum number of parentheses we have to add to make this string valid. We don't actually want to build the string, just give me the number. We only need a single one, and that is gonna look like this. Just add it at the beginning, because as you can see, if we were scanning from left to right, we could look at this value and say, okay, we have an open parenthesis. We need to remember that in some kind of way. Commonly, you can use a stack. I'll kind of draw that down here. We have an open parenthesis, and then we come to a closing parenthesis. And what we usually do with that is this should close the previous open parenthesis. So so anytime we see a closing parenthesis, it's actually not going to be pushed to the stack. The stack is mainly going to keep track of the open parenthesis. So with this one, we can actually pop it. The fact that our stack is empty right now indicates that so far the string is balanced. Now, when we get to the last parenthesis open, we notice that our stack is empty. There isn't a matching open parenthesis. So if we were maintaining our result, the number of parentheses we have to add, initially it would be zero. Well, now clearly we would increment that guy by one. So it would be one by the end of the string. Again, this closing parenthesis would not be added. The fact that we incremented our result should assume that it was added in a position that makes this valid anyway. So while this solution will definitely work, is it actually necessary for us to use a stack? Let's consider a different example. The second example down there has three consecutive open parentheses. This might make you think you need a stack, add those three open parentheses onto the stack because the idea is that we could have some closing parentheses that come after and each closing parenthesis would end up popping one of these guys. So we might have a chain of these. We might need to remember that we have three open parentheses. That's why we have a stack to have multiple characters added to it. But that's actually not necessary. Why not just have a single variable which says open, right? The count of open parentheses. Initially, it's zero. As we scan through this, we'll increment it every time we see an open one, and it'll be set to three. By the end, if we don't see any closing parentheses, well, we're going to say that we have three open parentheses that were never closed, so our result is going to be three. Suppose we did have, like, let's say one closing parenthesis. Well, then we would have decremented this count down to two. Suppose we had two more, we would have decremented this guy down to zero. Maybe if we had one more, a fourth one, we would add that, see that our count is already zero. We don't have any open parentheses. So this is kind of similar to the stack. When our stack was empty, remember what we did? We took that result, which is zero, and we will increment it by one. So now suppose we had like a couple more open parentheses, one, two, we're gonna end up incrementing this count to two. And so now at the end, what would we return? Remember this fourth parenthesis, we actually did close it when we incremented the result. So this is like the only parenthesis we added that open parenthesis, and then we ended with a surplus of open parentheses, two of them. So what should we return? Probably the sum of these two, which would be three in this case. That means that this is the one that we added and we would add two more closing parentheses here. This actually indicates the number of closing parentheses that we have to add. The result indicates the number of open parentheses that we did add and you accumulate them, you get the result. Now, this is better than the stack solution because we have a variable rather than a data structure. So constant space and linear time because we're just scanning through the input. Before I jump into coding this, I want to quickly mention, you might start to think, well, that really old classic leak code problem, I think it's leak code 20, validate parentheses. Don't ask me how I remember that, but 
That one, you can't solve without a stack. You can't just keep track of the variables. And remember, that problem actually had three types of parentheses, these square and then the curly ones that I'm bad at drawing. They had three different types of parentheses. That's why you could not just count the number of open parentheses in this problem. Because if you did, let's say you had something like this, and then this, and then this, and then you come across a closing parenthesis. If you just had the count, you have two open parentheses and now one closing parenthesis. You might think that this can close that, but no, it doesn't work like that. We have to close the curly ones first. So not only do we have to keep the count of them, but we have to maintain the order of them as well. And that's why a stack is necessary for that problem, but not for this one. Okay, now let's code it up. We'll keep it nice and short. I'm gonna keep track of the open count since this is a keyword. I think it's like a built-in function. I'm gonna call it open count like that. And what we're end up, gonna end up returning, I'll have my result here as well. This is kind of the good part of doing a drawing explanation because now we know exactly what we're gonna do, return the result as well as the open count. Then in between, let's go through every character. There's only two cases. Either the character is open or it is a closing parenthesis. If it's open, that's the simple case. All you gotta do is take the open count and increment it by one. In the other case, we will take the open count and decrement it by one. Now, what if it was already zero? Well, maybe we should set it to the max of itself, well, itself minus one and zero because maybe decrementing it by one will make it negative. So this is one way to handle this. You could also do that with an if statement. And then um, and maybe before we decrement the count, we check if the open count is already equal to zero, then we shouldn't decrement it. And that's what this will do. It won't really change the open count value. But if it's zero and we just got a closing parenthesis, that means we don't have a matching open parenthesis and therefore we're going to increment the result by one. So this is the entire solution. I'll run it just to show you that it works. I promise you it's more efficient than this is indicating, but I wanted to code it a slightly different way. If you're kind of a beginner or noob, it might make more sense to see the code written like this where we just decrement the count and then we check if it went negative, if it's less than zero now, what should we do? Probably reset it back to zero and increment the result by one because we need a matching open parenthesis. So this will also work. And for whatever reason, this time it's more efficient. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.